Hello, it's Andy and um, I'm in the woodshed and I'm going to be discussing removing bark from hiking sticks. Basically why I do it, um, how I do it and what the benefits and disadvantages are. So without any further ado, we'll get straight into that topic. So I've got one of my blanks here and I actually cut mine and I leave all the bark on now. I used to remove the bark on a lot of my hiking sticks but there is one major flaw with that once I've removed the bark I can't put it back on so I prefer to dry them with the bark on and it allows me to see at the end of the drying period whether I have a well usable stick I can leave the bark on and indeed if the bark has survived in a, in a usable condition the drying process because there's never a guarantee the bark won't end up becoming should we say flaky cracked lift off the wood you know there's a multitude of things that could go wrong during the uh, drying process which means you would have to strip the um, bark off back to wood so you can use the wood to make a hiking stick so you know all that being said um, from this if the bark is any good I can produce something like this now this one here as you can see has got 90% of the bark left on it except for the areas I've got my logo burnt on and I have a stag head burnt on and I've got a nice little wooden ball shaped into the handle showing the grain and it sets the bark off now this piece of bark here is a nice color it's really shiny smooth it's got silvers olives browns and it's looking really nice and that piece of bark I was able to achieve this result so that's what I'm aiming to get to from that so getting back to the other models, we've got one we call the vintage uh, uh, model or collection when we actually take to craft fairs. And that means we've kind of given them a distressed oldie look and a well used and should we say um, a authentic look that they've, they, they're carrying some miles in age. Um, obviously that's not everybody's cup of tea, but some people kind of quite like that. It kind of a little bit kind of retro type thing. And this would be one. This doesn't have a, a woodland animal burnt on it. It's got my logo there. And the wood is kind of stained. And then we distress it and put some marks in it to make it look like it's seen some miles. And, um, you know, these do appeal to some people, like I said. Particularly people who, you know, like that feeling of something a little bit retro, oldie world, and something that looks like the granddad may have had, you know, in the back of the, the, the hallway, waiting for him to go out and uh, hit the footpaths. But uh, no, but it needs the bark taken off it to actually do this. So that's another reason I have to remove bark for this style of stick. So once you've stripped your bark and you get to look at the wood and you can apply your products and do your finishing, sanding, your wood burning, your shaping, um, trying to find the grain, the knots, working them out or working them into the, the final uh, product, you're then left with the varying degrees of difference, i.e. even the same species will have different colorations. And to kind of prove that point this one here has a highland cow burnt on it my logo and you can see dark patches of bark just left on it but the actual wood that I've got down to is actually like a light tan with a few darker patches in it and as you can see it goes up to a slightly lighter color on the handle now, to prove how different the wood coloration same species can be, this has pretty much um, been shaped and sanded to give the same kind of effect, like a kind of dappled effect, 
but the underlying bits of bark are darker are in this one but we have cream colored wood cream so that really sets off these um, bits of bark yet again when I burnt this because it was a light colored wood that Highland cow really did stand out and there you go you can see same species two different sticks manufactured in the same vein but different colorations of the, the baseline wood itself before you even get to the actual underlying bark now this is also something that can be demonstrated by the variations of the stick the colorations yet again this is a light colored wood it's got a stag's head on this one if I bring it around my logo again which is standing out quite prominent because it's like an almost kind of whitey cream wood it's hazel again and this stick on the handle you might just be able to see varying patches of dark brown even going into like a, a purpley black color and down through the actual stick itself I've got very light tan underlying bits of bark and the wood itself is cream so this gives a slightly different effect than the previous two I've shown you and that's just by removing the bark and I had no idea what I was going to get till I removed the bark but to be able to produce these sticks the bark has to come off obviously so the advantage of leaving the bark on is firstly it saves me a lot of work I'm not stripping the bark off and you know a lot of people will say or stick makers will say you know that that also brings on a lot of work themselves by making it look presentable and nice but in real terms stripping the bark off is a lot more work than leaving it on and on top of that because you're leaving the bark on and you're not processing the stick more than it needs to you're in no danger of leaving uh, uh, manufacturing marks in the wood which you then either have to sand out or you can't fully get them out uh, so they're kind of a little bit there visible but uh, in either case you know it's uh, the advantages of leaving the bark on for me are less work to get the bark off and less sanding to remove any manufacturing marks after taking the bark off so those are big advantages for me if I'm leaving the bark on so what's the disadvantage for me leaving the bark on first and foremost burning on a woodland animal or a design to the stick bark doesn't readily take to wood burning and indeed um, I've had you know varying degrees of success but it's never been wholly 100% um, effective and if I had my choice and you know and I and I you know have my preference I do not uh, tr even try to burn onto bark I just don't bother um, it doesn't take to a burn so that's one disadvantage the other disadvantage when it comes to sales not everybody likes the actual um, look of bark there is a slight underlying undercurrent feeling that bark represents the older members of the hiking community and a lot of people like the the stripped down so it has like multiple colorations and indeed younger people tend to gravitate to sticks which have multiple different colors in the wood and really strong prominent designs I've even been asked to do um, a Yeti because uh, one hiker um, obviously had that as his uh, nickname and uh, so I had to wood burn a Yeti on, on a custom stick but those are just trends I've noticed so you know bark doesn't take readily to wood burning and um, obviously it's not to everybody's cup of tea you know as in a preference so actually getting around to remove the bark that's one thing um, 
which a lot of stick makers have their own individual methods. For me, I'm using the back end or the spine of this wood saw, quite simply because it's not too sharp where it catches and digs in the wood. It's got enough, um, shall we say, of an edge to dig the bark and, and as I push up the stick, remove it, but it's not sharp enough to bite into the wood, leaving processing marks of me actually taking the bark off. Um, there are people that uh, prefer to take the bark off you know, when the stick is uh, wet, freshly cut, because in some uh, cases, species, you can almost, once you start it, you can just peel off great big slips of wood in one go. But if they're seasoned like this, it will mean me doing the hard um, work of actually scraping it off. Um, sometimes it comes easy, but in a lot of cases, it means a lot of pushing and drawing, so you get a lot of strain on the arm and the wrist. And indeed, this hand here holding it like a vice. Um, so I'll quickly show you how I remove that and how effective my method is. And, um, you know, that might be applicable to you if you're um, going to do yourself your own personal hiking stick. You'll have to excuse the tractors and the agricultural noise because I've got fields behind me. The farmers are this time of year, um, cutting for straw, hay, silage and all things of that nature. But anyway, getting back to this, my stick here is firmly jammed in my knee. I've got my other hand free, which I grab it. You can see what I mean, it's not a sharp edge. It's It's got enough of an edge to bite and I'll show you. And all I'm doing is holding it firm, placing my thumb behind the blade and pushing down. And you can see, as I pass, I'm bringing it down to the wood. Now I'll pull this around so you can see what I'm doing. But as you can see, I'm taking multiple passes to get down and see that's the wood there. And this is the different layers of the bark, makeup of the bark. Now, you could take the outer and just leave the internal bit, or sometimes I like to leave just a very smidgen on the bark itself to give those patches that I, that I uh, demonstrated in my other sticks. So as you can see, just holding it like this. And because it's not sharp, it's not biting into the wood and jamming up, it's flowing over. Even the small knot, it's going over. And as you can see, that method there leaves no marks where the blade is bit into the wood. It's completely fine. Um, it, and and that, that I can actually feel the internals of the wood grain there. It, and like you say, I haven't damaged it. Now, why do I mind making such a big thing? You'd think to sand it out. But the thing is, if you're doing a volume of these, you do not want to be spending too much time sanding. The less you damage or disturb the wood or, should we say, um, put processing marks into the wood, that's less sanding for you and less work. And on top of that, it's leaving the stick looking and preserved in a more natural state. And you can see that. And like I said, if you've got a wooden hiking stick, you kind of want to be able to see and feel some kind of connection with the natural product it, uh, that way it actually came from, which was, you know, a hazel tree. I have to point out this isn't a correct tool. You could get a cabinet scraper or get a piece of metal or anything you can find with a dull edge, but enough of a uh, should we say right angle on it to be able to achieve the same effect it just so happens that my wood saw has that on the back and I discovered that while I was out in the field I was able to remove bark and I use it in this roll back in the workshop and the woodshed but as you can see it's a saw I'm putting my hands there I'm placing my thumb there I have to say don't copy what I'm doing with a saw blade because if you were to slip or you're not confident around tools and you 
were not uh, proficient enough with the use of it this in the use of this tool in this method you could slip and obviously cut your hands on the saw blade so don't follow what I'm doing find a tool that uh, can replicate what I'm showing you here all I'm showing you is I'm using the back edge of this uh, um, blade to achieve what I'm doing here but there would be a multiple of um, other tools objects or indeed uh, cabinet scrapers and things like that which would have edges which could achieve this effect and they would do it in a more safe manner but as you can see this is uh, quite effective for me just using that back edge I've already removed this amount of bark here and once you get into the into the swing of it you can see you can watch what you're doing and mark out what you're taking from the actual stick but it is it's a physical job and it's repetitive on that same part of the body it's fine if you're doing one hiking stick maybe two or three here and there but if you're doing a volume of them <laughs> it does get quite uh, a stress on your arm coming down through pushing and drawing back all the time because you have to put a substantial amount of effort to push past that wood and remove it so that is something to bear in mind so there you go guys you can quite clearly see how I'm taking the bark off and in my method and how I do it although I did state it wasn't a safe practice and don't copy what you see me doing get the proper tool as I always state anything you see me do go and get the proper tool but anyway, that's how I'm achieving taking the bark off. I gave you my reasons why I take the bark off. And on top of that, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of leaving the bark on and also taking the bark off. So I hope you kind of uh, got a little bit uh, out of seeing um, the methods and the whys and the whens like uh, around taking bark off uh, hiking sticks. But um, as I always say, a lot of it will come down to personal choice and preference. And the only time that's taken out of your hands is when the bark isn't applicable or it's damaged or it's of no, um, it's of no quality to leave on the stick. And then obviously the choices are taken out of your hand. But uh, yeah, um, I'm going to leave it there. This is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks. Uh, stay safe on the trails.